As we seem to be moving into days of increasing lawlessness, it seems prudent to turn our minds to the wisdom of the living God on proper behavior between human beings. In fact, he gave some rules on Mount Sinai over 3,500 years ago. Imagine, if you will, a beautiful stone, blue and semi-transparent, engraved by the finger of the living God. This, the rabbis tell us, is what the tablets of the testimony looked like. The Bible never refers to the so-called Ten Commandments by those exact terms. The physical item has several names, the tablets of the covenant in Deuteronomy 9.9, the stone tablets in Exodus 24.12, and the tablets of the testimony in Exodus 31.18. The words etched thereon are called literally the Ten Sayings or the Ten Words. They were etched by Jehovah with his own finger on both sides of the stone and given twice to Moses, once in Exodus 34.1 and again in verse 28. Remember, Moses had broken the first set on account of the incident with the golden calf. The sayings are split, outlining some specifics pertaining to the relationships between people and God on one side and between people and other people on the other side. There are the Godward commandments and the manward commandments. The rabbis teach that the ten sayings are a synopsis of all the Torah commandments, however many you think there are. Likewise, Yeshua taught that the two commandments on which hang all the rest were the Godward commandment and the manward commandment, as it is written in Matthew twenty-two thirty-six through 40. Rabbi, they said, which is the greatest commandment in the Torah? Yeshua said to him, You shall love Yehovah your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the Torah and the prophets. Although they are often represented with sayings on one through five on one stone and six through ten on the other, we can consider the possibility that there were two copies of the same thing, both written on both sides, as stated in Exodus 32:15. They might have been two copies of the same thing because it was a contract between two parties, as it is written in Leviticus 26:12. I will be your God, and you will be my people. Two copies means that there's a copy for each party. Apparently God didn't need his copy, so he let Moses take both copies. Maybe the two copies are for the two kingdoms of Israel and of Judah. Moses recounts in his repetition of the Torah in Deuteronomy 9.10, And Jehovah gave me two tablets of stone written with the finger of Elohim, and on them were all the words which Jehovah had spoken to you on the mountain in the midst of the fire on the day of the assembly. The people had already agreed to it before they even heard it. But what happened after they actually heard it? They said, Moses, you tell us what God says, and we'll listen, but don't let God speak directly to us because we may die. It's too much for us. Thunder, lightning, noise, roaring fires. It's too scary. Moses, you go. And isn't that what we do? We long to hear from Jehovah, but when he speaks, we are afraid and not really willing to do what he asks. Eventually, Jehovah gave his people a new set of tablets, those of flesh, as promised by the prophets in Jeremiah 31, 3 through 33, and Ezekiel 36, 26 through 27. Paul also wrote in 2 Corinthians 3, 3, Clearly, you are an epistle of Messiah ministered by us written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh, that is, of the heart. One reason that Paul refers specifically to the ink in this passage is because he is making an analogy between the etching of stone and of our hearts. Neither is written with ink, which is separate from and can be removed from paper. When something is engraved in rock, it cannot come off. The shape of the rock is changed permanently and cannot be restored to its original shape. So should our hearts be. As members of the covenant, once Jehovah has engraved his word upon them. The first of the ten sayings is, I am Jehovah, your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. If you do not know who your God is, the rest of the commandments are meaningless in your life. The second is, Thou shalt have no other gods before me, and thou shalt not make idols. 3. 
Don't use the name of God in vain. What does in vain mean? For nothing. It's useless. 4. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Holy means set apart and different. There are six specific requirements in the Bible. Three of them are in Exodus 20. Don't do any work. Don't let your maidservant do any work. Don't let your animals do any work. In Nehemiah 13, 17 through 22, it tells us not to buy or sell. In Exodus 35, 3, we learn that you shouldn't light a fire, and we see that God required the man who was collecting sticks on the Sabbath day to be stoned to death. The last requirement is in the New Testament, where it talks about a Sabbath day's walk. Although this is an oral law, it was ordained by the time of Yeshua, or it would not appear in the New Testament. 5. Honor your parents. 6. Do not murder. 7. Do not commit adultery. 8. Do not steal. 9. Do not bear false testimony. 10. Do not covet. The rabbis of old taught that the rock was a sapphire-like stone, somewhat transparent. Being written on both sides, they drew the conclusion that the sayings corresponded one to another. This concept is quoted in the Mechilta of Rabbi Ishmael, written in the second century of the Common Era. If one side of the stone contained what we would call numbers 1 through 5, and the other side, numbers 6 through 10, we would be looking at 1 and 6 at the same time, at 2 and 7 at the same time, and so on. So we can read them not only downwards, but also across the tablets as they are frequently illustrated. Comparing 1 and 6. 1. I am Yehovah, your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. 6. Do not murder. Man is made in God's image. The idea of murder means in cold blood, a premeditated plan to take somebody's life. It does not include other kinds of killing. If you accidentally commit homicide, that is not covered by this commandment, and there are other places in the Torah where such cases are dealt with. If you murder a man, it is considered to be equivalent to denying who God is because man is made in God's image. It is considered to be the equivalent to killing God, something that the German philosopher Nietzsche waxed eloquent about in 1882. However, as it turns out, Nietzsche is dead, but God is still very much alive. 2 and 7 2. Thou shalt have no other gods before me, thou shalt make no carved images. 7. Do not commit adultery. Idolatry has always been considered to be the spiritual adultery. There are many biblical references to this. Our relationship to the Lord is equivalent to a marriage relationship. 3 and 8. 3. Thou shalt not take the name of Jehovah your God in vain. 8. Do not steal. Taking the name in vain is stealing the honor of God and who he is. God is going to give you what you need. He has confirmed that in Philippians 4.19, where it is written, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Messiah Yeshua. If you begin to think about taking something that does not belong to you, you can fall into what is called the prosperity gospel. The perversion of God giving you everything you need becomes God giving you everything you want. If you continually claim things in the name of the Lord, you are stealing, and you are using God's name in vain. Likewise, it is useless to claim you are a believer if you are not. That is also taking God's name in vain. Okay, this is the one that hurts. 4 and 9. 4. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. 9. Do not bear false witness. If you're not keeping Sabbath, you're bearing false witness. Sabbath is a sign between the believer and the Lord forever as it is written in Exodus 31, 16, and 17. Finally, 5 and 10. 5. Honor your father and your mother, that it may go well with you. 10. Do not covet. Many people desire to have circumstances other than the ones that they find themselves in, including wishing that they had different parents. This is not to condone the ill behavior that some people have received at the hand of their parents or other authority figures, Yehovah in no way condones abuse. If there is any way in which you can honor your parents for anything, then honor them. But there are people with this attitude. 
My life would be better if I just had the right parents, and by extension, the right boss, the right pastor, and so on. As a result, they neither take responsibility for their own actions, nor do they accept what they have been given as from the hand of the Lord. Their bitterness will eventually outweigh their gratitude. Honoring one's parents is equivalent to honoring God. Not coveting is equivalent to honoring your neighbor by honoring his possessions as being his and having been given to him by God. Now there are those believers who will try to disavow that Yeshua confirmed all the commandments, especially the painful fourth one, by pointing to the story of the rich young ruler. In Matthew 19.16, the young man asks what he must do to inherit eternal life. Yeshua quotes in verse 18, Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not testify falsely, honor your father and your mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. The fact that he answers sayings 6, 7, 8, 9, and 5 points to each of their doubles, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 10. This is equivalent to saying, do all of them, all of these 10. According to the traditional Midrash, he includes keeping Sabbath as part of the 10. One more interesting fact about the tablets is that the second tablet, the Manward Commandments, has 26 words. This is the gematria for God's name, yud He vav He. It is a reminder that he considers the manward commandments equivalent to the Godward commandments. As it is written in 1 John 4, 20 and 21, If a man say, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he that loves not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment have we from him that he who loves God loves his brother also. Amen.